right, graduates. Can you all listen up for a second? We have a couple things to go over. All right, listen up. A couple things. Um, when everybody on the stage comes up, so the Board of Education, Ms. Wilson, me, all those people, when we come up on the stage, that's when you guys stand. Okay, when you see us walk up here, we're going to stand in front of our chairs, and then you guys are going to stand up. Um, when you are walking across the stage to get your diploma, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have Mr. Young. You can give him a fist bump if you want to. He's going to be first. Then you're going to see Miss Wilson. You're going to shake her hand, get your diploma. You're going to walk down the ramp. There's going to be a photographer there. Hold up your diploma, take a pretty picture, go back to your seat. Okay, so there's going to be two people. I'm going to be here telling you when to go, Mr. Young, Miss Wilson, and then you're going to go back around. Um, at the end, we are going to do a cap toss, okay? So at the very end, we're going to say something like a little quote, congratulations, you're going to toss your cap. Now this is important. Take off your tassel before you toss your cap. The caps we can replace. If you can't find a cap, like after we toss them, if you can find one that's close to you, great, grab it and go. Otherwise, we're going to pick up all the extra and you can always pick up an extra cap at school this week but you may want to take your tassel off before you throw it in case you don't find your actual cap. Don't chunk it, just do the regular thing, whatever falls down, grab it and go. Just make sure you take off your tassel. Speaking of tassels, your tassels should be on the right side right now. Everybody's tassel should be on the right, and then when we say, graduates, it's now time to turn your tassel, you turn it to the left. Okay, everybody's on the right, got it. Okay, your gowns need to be zipped up. This is a formal ceremony. You must zip up your gowns. Let's see. When we're done, after the cap toss, listen very carefully, this is super important. After the cap toss, the very last row, so those of you in the back, you guys are gonna stand, you're gonna come to the middle, and you're going to go up those two sets of stairs. You'll see the faculty going before you, but we are going row by row. So when we're done, just grab a cap, stay in your seat until it's your turn to go. Miss Bronner will be there to help you. You're literally making two lines and you're going back out the back and up those two diagonal big sets of stairs. That's where you're gonna exit and there should be signs out front that have name ranges so that you can find your parents and family and friends. So find that sign that matches with your last name and that's where your, your guests should be going. Okay, so we're not all leaving at once like last year. We are recessing out those stairs one row at a time starting with the back row. Got it? Okay, this is your day, this is your moment. It's gonna be awesome, I'm so proud of you. We're getting started soon, so just hang out and It'll be over before you know it. I'm proud of you.
come and then you if they're not staying I mean you're gonna just start reading the first part all right I'm not gonna get close to the mic because yeah. it's live yeah um but that is our class of first of all you I know to come as soon as they're yeah when it's when we're up here <laughs> from where I yep, yep, yep. okay so the person before you is going to hopefully have moved the thing okay but if not you'll see these tabs Yours is just in the beginning. You might have to move yours because if, okay. if um, Maya, when you get done, if you want to flip it so it's there for Emory for sh when she starts. Okay. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Okay. Maya, but no stress, seriously, if you're like that. <laughs> After we're done, do we have to like say anything off script or do we just walk out? You have to say, hold on. Okay, so wait. Considering how loud I am, how far away should I stand from the mic? They should adjust it for you. Right. You just stand, stand where you feel comfortable and they'll, and they'll adjust the, the volume. Okay? Just be slow okay. and clear because yeah. if you go real fast, then it gets muffled and they can't okay, hear what you're saying. Does it echo a little bit? It does oh. echo a little bit, but don't listen to that. Just, you just talk in your normal rhythm. It's and like talking to our parents. It's and not then as you just as I thought it was. Yeah, it's a lot smaller.
Guests and graduates, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and for the singing of our national anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And on earth be light, was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the One of the dearest people in my life has always told me, if you find someone at the top of a mountain, you can be sure that they didn't fall there. Today is our graduation, and it is not by luck that we have simply fallen where we currently sit. The cap and gown we so proudly wear was earned through the constant effort of our climbing into our first hill of adulthood. As we summit and we look back over our climb, we each have chosen our path to place us here today. Regardless of the path that each of us took, from where I stand, this view is beautiful. However, I make the assumption that none of us are quite satisfied with our current summit and our eyes have already set sight for our next climb. In the spirit of past self-evaluation, it has been recommended to me a simple process of reflection that I hope may have a similar impact for you. This process of reflection is called stop. What things, looking back, do we wish we wouldn't have done? Start, what can we begin doing? And finally, my favorite, continue. What will we continue to do? As we now, in this present moment, mentally catch our breath, emotionally hydrate, and prepare ourselves for our next summit, may I share a few considerations for our three-step process. Stop. Along our climb, we have moments of regret. Tripping over our pride, taking the wrong path towards detachment, or becoming lost in our own anxiety. Looking back, personally, I went at some of the decisions that I made, wishing I would have paid closer attention to, to the advice given to me by people who loved me. I ask all of you to think to yourselves now. How many of you have been told something you didn't want to hear? Now, how many of you live to regret not listening? Winston Churchill once said, criticism may not be agreeable, but it is necessary. It fulfills the same function as pain in the human body. It calls attention to an unhealthy state of things. Listening and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable to constructive criticism is the most vital portion of our concept of stopping ourselves from repeating a past we don't want to relive. Maybe the feedback becomes a longer list than you may want to hear, but by picking one to start, we can build our momentum of climbing our mountains. Start. Have there been moments in your life where you felt that the actual idea of starting something new seemed more daunting than the task itself? Whether it's beginning a new major, starting a new relationship, 
or committing yourself to a change in character. We often push back our start times because we are afraid of failure or lack of greatness. We postpone our happiness because our natural instinct is to stay small and not go too far out of our comfort zone. And honestly, this is dumb. Why wait when our lives are happening right now? With college approaching, we have this grand idea that we can be anything we choose to be. This is the most perfect moment for each of us to take that fresh start and make something amazing out of ourselves. So be brave, work hard. What do we have to lose? Your past does not define you anymore. And those insecurities that may have plagued you for so long do not have to carry into this next chapter of your life. Marianna Williamson rings with truth as she proclaims, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. My fellow classmates, now is the time to start. Continue. Just because there's new things to start and old habits to stop doesn't mean that there aren't wonderful things that we can continue doing. What comes to mind when you think of your best memories of these past four years? Was there a teacher that really inspired you to do more or to think bigger? Was there a team or a club where you know that when you see those people in 30 years, that same excitement will return and it will feel like you were just here yesterday? Was there a challenge that you rose to and you gained confidence from just simply trying? What part of your past at South Forsyth High School do you want to keep always? Of course, goodbyes will always be difficult, and there will be plenty of goodbyes as we leave this building today. But the trials and the victories from this past climb will be necessary in all future ascents. So don't say goodbye to your failures and your victories. Rather, honor them by becoming the people we are meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, what will be our Everest? No matter the summit we choose to mount or the challenge we take head on, we are capable of making it to our peak by stopping ourselves from repeating past mistakes, starting to live courageously, and continuing our climb till we are satisfied with our view. You have created a legacy here, one filled with friendships, devious licks, pandemics, music Fridays, and people that will be extraordinarily missed as we finally arrive at the top of our first summit. I hope that as we finish looking into our past, we recognize the amazing view waiting for us on the other side. Congratulations, class of 2022. It has been an honor experiencing this journey with you. Now, on behalf of the class of 2022, I would like to welcome you to today's graduation ceremony. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you our biggest advocate and wonderful principal, Ms. Laura Wilson. Thank you. Welcome to the commencement ceremonies for the class of 2022. This event is meaningful to everyone in the arena. Seated on stage to share in your students' achievements are Forsyth County Board of Education members, Ms. Kristen Morrissey, who has served our district, Mr. Tom Cleveland, Mr. Wes McCall. Also seated on stage, representing our central office, are Dr. Cindy Salome, Associate Superintendent of Human Resources and Legal Services, and Mr. Mitch Young, Deputy Superintendent of Schools. It is also with great pride and pleasure that I introduce to you South Forsyth High School's 2021-2022 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Katie Urbanovich. And our star teacher, Mr. Kevin Denny. I would also like to recognize our lead counselor, Ms. Amy Short your senior administrator, Mr. Scott Morlane, our graduation administrator, Ms. Rebecca Hewitt, 
and your very much loved senior class sponsor, Miss Lisa Duff. I would like to recognize our star student, Nisha Roy. Nisha, please stand and be recognized at this time. Also present in the arena are many of your teachers. We have an outstanding faculty and staff that have loved and supported you for the past four years. We all feel pride in your accomplishments and we celebrate with you today. I'd like to take a moment, class of 2022, and share some thoughts with you. Seniors, war eagles always. I recently came across a statement that spoke volumes and seemed most appropriate for this occasion. Behind you, all your memories. Before you, all your dreams. Around you, all who love you. And within you, all you need. I want you to focus for a moment as we break down that saying. Really think about meaningful examples of what I'm about to share. So behind you, all your memories, childhood, holidays, vacations to the beach, first jobs, learning to drive, first loves, broken hearts, that feeling of accomplishment when you did more than you thought you could do, a proud moment, a moment you wish you could do over and do differently, a friendship, a triumph, a defeat, and a rebound. All unique to you, all woven into the fabric of your story, all impactful on the future you and your response to life's happenings. Some memories reinforce behaviors, some memories guide us down a different path. All are important. All are valuable in the sense that we grow and we learn and we develop. So much of what used to be considered normal is gone. And I consider that, in a way, a gift. The opportunity to rebuild how the world works, business, school, human interaction, and so much more can now be redefined. And you are part of those decisions. Accept and embrace that challenge. Before you, all your dreams. Hold on to those dreams. Strive for those dreams. Don't let others dissuade you or tell you that you can't. Stay focused. Find a mentor to guide you in your pursuit of the dream. Be coachable. Accept advice. Also remember, life is kind of like the Waze app. There are multiple paths to a single destination. Some are quicker than others. Some take longer to get there. Sometimes there are barriers, accidents, road work, on the way, and a detour becomes your course. You will encounter those who are broken down on your path, and you can choose to pause and help. There are also those in place to cause us to reflect on our progress. Yep, that's you, cuppers. Forcing us to slow down for a moment, reflect, readjust, and continue. All those things and so many more show up on our journey. The road gets messy in parts. Detours happen, but we persist toward our final destination. Sometimes we are exhausted when we arrive, but that's okay. Keep striving for those dreams. Graduates, you are not here to repeat the lives of your parents, your friends, or even the other graduates in the room. You have your own life to carve out. Your imagination, your drive, your dreams, your determination, your creativity. These things will define your future and your contributions to this world. The world needs your contributions. Each of you has so much value and so much talent to offer. Around you, all who love you. Look around this room, soak it in for a minute. In this arena are parents and siblings and grandparents and guardians and teachers and coaches and friends. All are your champions. All with you through the easy times and the challenging times. Laughter, tears, all-nighters, cram sessions, college applications and admissions, first jobs, military appointments, people who are always here for you and with you. They are in this room. 
My mom used to sign all of her notes to me with the expression, always, all, ways. These are your people, always and forever, and in all ways. Your squad, your team, your homies, your posse, whatever we call them today, your crew, value them and appreciate them as they do you. At my age, I simply call this family. But one very important person I have not yet mentioned is you. You must love yourself first for others to love you. You must know yourself and you must trust yourself. You now have a high school diploma. It's time to commit to being a lifelong learner that when the world shifts, and it will again and again, you can shift with it. Discover what you are curious about and learn more. Decide what creates fear for you and poke at it, prod it, test it, learn from it, and conquer it. And finally, within you, all you need. All you need to strive, to dream, to succeed, to persevere, to overcome, to fight, to show determination, to care, to love, and to live life to its fullest. This is all within you. Believe in yourself, class of 2022. Trust your gut. Give grace. Have grit. Slow down enough to see the world and all the people in it. Be kind. Care about others. Care about yourself. Consider the baggage others are carrying before you respond. Would you want the same? Really listen and understand how it would feel to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. Every day, the only things that you can control are your attitude and your perception. So, today you've come to the end of a long road, and you've come to the start of a new path. Today you might feel nostalgic, a bit wistful, wistful perhaps. Part of you wanting to hold on to the past and the known, all of these friends, the good times, Yet you also feel excitement at all the possibilities of what's to come. New experiences and new friends. All of these are appropriate feelings. Embrace them. These feelings mean you are human. These feelings mean you are connected to yourself. Class of 2022, all you need is within you. For personal happiness and to dwell on this earth at this time as a human being. All you need is within you to make this world a better place, to make someone smile, to hear and understand another's perspective, all you need is within you, poured into you by the loved ones surrounding you today. All you need, the strength, the courage, and the ability, they're within you. Class of 2022, I congratulate you. I thank you for the legacy that you leave behind. I am excited to see where life takes you as you unleash what lies within you on the waiting world. Best wishes. It is now with great pride that I introduce this year's salutatorian, Sunika Tadapali. Her kind heart and giving spirit have called her to a life of serving others. In our community, she has volunteered over 500 hours, engaging in service to others at a local memory care center, through an organization that raises awareness for thrombosis, and through her leadership with the Georgia Mad Hatter Knits Foundation. As the co-founder and secretary of this nonprofit organization, she and a team of fellow knitters dedicate countless hours knitting and donating be beanies for premature babies at local hospitals. In addition, Sanika is the founder of Golden Guide, a tutoring organization that do donates all of its proceeds to charities and hospitals around the world. She was a research intern at Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences and is enrolling in the Georgia Institute of Technology Honors Program this fall as a biomedical engineering major on the pre-med track. Outside of school, she enjoys spending time with family and friends, playing the piano, and working hard to earn that 4.71 GPA. Please join me in welcoming Sunika. Good morning, staff, families, and fellow graduates. We have been through so much these past four years together. The lessons we've learned, the experiences we've grown from, and the times we've all cherished. 
South has prepared us as a diverse student body with different strengths to go out there on each of our own respective paths. All of these have led up to the present, which I would now like to take a moment to recognize. I'm sure that sometime during our high school years, we have each imagined this moment as we graduate. I don't know how any of us could have truly envisioned it until now though. My family and friends tease me for how much I use this phrase, I don't know. Whenever I got a question such as what is your dream college or even what's your reasoning behind a decision, my response would always be, I don't know. Similarly, I don't know exactly why things happened the way they did in the past, nor do, I don't, nor do I know what the future holds for each of us. What I do know, however, is that today is the day we are graduating high school. Today is a formative turning point. More than these, I think that today is a day we should smile at who we are and celebrate with the people we love so that we can rise into the future to work hard and do the things we care for. In other words, I would say that today is the day we approach a fork in the road. Many of us have read the poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. In this poem, Frost describes a dilemma in which the speaker has to choose between two diverging paths. Throughout this past year, we've faced so many of these forks which have led us right to this moment. Looking forward to these paths, we might feel underprepared for what is yet to come. I've noticed up until this point that I always seem to stress about what was upcoming and what had already been finished. As a freshman, the upcoming, scene, the upcoming year seemed so tedious and I would overload my plate to get ready for the future. And as a senior, I could only hope my past accomplishments were good enough. In reality, it's all of these paths we have taken so far that brought us here and made us who we are. And who we are is something to be proud of and celebrate. Class of 2022, I encourage you to not dwell on the past or worry about the future, but rather use our experiences from before and the vast possibilities of the future to empower us to choose the right path and to possibly forge our own as we enter this fork. Ultimately, I cannot say through words how grateful I am to be here alongside this diverse and talented class who I'm sure will go and grow to do amazing things and make powerful contributions in the real world. Thank you so much to all of our teachers, faculty, and most importantly, our friends and families who helped us get to this position. Congratulations to all the high schoolers graduating today, and thank you for your time.
At this time, it is an honor and a privilege to introduce our 2022 valedictorian, Drithi Tumala. Drithi's sincere love of learning and passion for helping others have created a unique experiences for her throughout high school. At Georgia State University, she conducted diabetes research at the Center for Molecular and Trans Translational Medicine, where she co-authored a recent publication. In addition, she serves as the Regional Executive Director of Break the Outbreak, a nonprofit organization that makes and donates personal protective equipment to local businesses and senior citizens. Her giving nature and kind heart have been her guiding force as she has spent over 500 volunteer hours at various hospitals and organizations, including Grady Memorial Hospital and the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. She is also the co-founder of Golden Guide Tutoring with our salutatorian, Sanika. She considers one of her greatest personal honors the accomplishment of performing a piano solo at Carnegie Hall in New York City. This fall, Drithi will be taking her hard-earned 4.75 GPA to the University of Alabama, Birmingham, where she will enroll in, her, in their BSMD program, which is an early medical school acceptance program. Please join me in welcoming her, welcoming her to the stage. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my mom and dad, my grandparents, and the rest of my family, my teachers, faculty, and my friends for supporting me every step of the way. I'd like to also thank each and every one of you for being here today to support the class of 2022. As I was thinking of ideas for this speech, I naturally got distracted and ended up going down a YouTube rabbit hole when I came across the story of Ernest Shackleton. His story took place over a century ago in 1914, but before I continue, let me just assure you all that this is not going to be a history lesson sponsored by our social studies department. Shackleton was a 30-year-old British explorer who made it his life's ambition to be the first person to voyage across Antarctica. Many people attempted this journey before him, but they all failed. But unlike his predecessors, Shackleton took a more unconventional approach. He prepared for his journey by putting up pamphlets across London to recruit men for his voyage. The pamphlets were brutally honest about the journey ahead and had described it with phrases like long months of complete darkness and safe return is doubtful, but also read that honor and recognition will be given in case of success. You wouldn't expect any rational thinking person to want to go on that journey after reading those pamphlets, but 27 men as, as bold as Shackleton signed up for the journey. Shackleton and his crew set sail on a ship and traveled for months. And when they were just one day away from reaching their destination, their ship got trapped in ice. Just as the ship was sinking, they were able to escape and set up tents on a nearby layer of ice. And Shackleton and the rest of the crew were stuck on the layer of ice and they were miles away from land they had no ship, no means of communication with the rest of the world, and with limited supplies. But remember, these were also the same men who willingly left their seemingly comfortable lives in London to go on a trip that no one had succeeded on before. So they persevered and pushed forward to stay alive. They didn't let the cold winds or the long dark winters stop them. And finally, after almost a year of actively trying to stay alive and find help, they were able to reach safety. Now, I had no intention of bumming you all out on a Sunday morning with a story about a ship that sank. But if there's one thing we can learn from this journey, the pandemic, and everything that's happened over these past four years, it's that we can never truly know what the future holds for us. We can never truly plan out our future and expect things to happen accordingly. But that shouldn't stop us from having meaningful goals. Just like Shackleton, it's okay to dream big, but it's just as important to have an honest goal and perseverance. And most importantly, Shackleton surrounded himself with the crew that motivated each other in times of difficulty. Together, they kept their focus on the future. They adapted to their circumstances and used every resource they possibly could to reach home safely. As we move on to next chapters of our lives, we are bound to face difficulties. 
But when we go on our journeys with the right crew, it makes all the difference. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you. Dr. Beard was unable to be here today with us, but he would like to share the following with each of you. I sincerely regret missing today's commencement exercises. I'm currently in Boston to celebrate my daughter Madison as she is graduating from Suffolk University. Congratulations to the class of 2022. You have persevered through some very challenging times. I could not be more proud of you or for you. I wish you great success always in your next chapter of life. Sincerely, Dr. Jeff Bearden. Mr. Young, I invite you to join me at the podium. South Forsyth High School, class of 2022, please stand. <laughs> Dr. Jeff Bearden has delegated the authority to release the diplomas to our Deputy Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Mitch Young. Mr. Young, it is with great pride and pleasure that I present to you the 2022 graduating class of South Forsyth High School. These students have met all state and local academic requirements for graduation and are prepared to receive their diplomas. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Parents, family and friends, faculty and staff, Forsyth County Board of Education, and the senior class. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of Georgia and through the Forsyth County Board of Education, I do hereby confer upon each of you the diploma for which you have qualified. Class of 2022, it wasn't easy, but you made it. You are no longer seniors, you are now graduates. Congratulations. <laughs>
move it down. Like, I'm Okay, if you would please stand for the singing of the alma mater, and if we could make sure the mics are on for the choir. Thank you. South Forsyth High School graduating class of 2022, please remain standing. Graduates, you may now move your tassels. <laughs>
Graduates, you may be seated. Class of 2022, I challenge you to fulfill our school motto, to connect, to achieve, and lead to inspire. We will never forget your many contributions to our school, and we wish you the best of luck with the next chapter in your journey. Please know you are always welcome to come home and visit. As we prepare to conclude our ceremony, it's important to pause for a moment to acknowledge those who have nurtured and supported our students all of their lives. I will be addressing specific groups of people. In our world, traditional roles are often filled by someone other than a blood relative. I consider these labels flexible and truly a matter of heart. Please be recognized as appropriate. If you are the grandmother or grandfather of a graduate, or serve in this role in any capacity, please stand. <laughs> if you are the father of a graduate or serve in this role in any capacity, Please stand and be recognized. And of course, the often unsung heroes, if you are the mother of a graduate, Finally, if you are a family member, a sibling, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, or a friend of these outstanding young people, please stand. If you are a student who will be proudly serving our country in the armed forces, Please stand and be recognized at this time. <laughs> Graduates, now it's your turn. Please stand. Family and friends, it is my pleasure to present to you the South Forsyth High School Class of 2022. Thank you, everyone. Class of 2022, you've walked across this stage, you've turned your tassel, and now it is finally time to throw your cap. But let me remind you of one thing. Graduation is not the end, but the beginning. Congratulations. Thank you everyone for your attendance. The students will process out the back and you can meet them in front of the arena.